Luke chapter 1, verses 5 through 25, the New Revised Standard Version. In the days of King Herod of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly order of Abijah. His wife was a descendant of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both of them were righteous before God, living blamelessly according to all the commandments and the regulations of the Lord. But they had no children, because Elizabeth was barren and both were getting on in years. Once when he was serving as priest before God and his section was on duty, he was chosen by lot according to the custom of the priesthood to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and offer incense. Now at the time of the incense offering, the whole assembly of the people was praying outside. Then there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was terrified and fear overwhelmed him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you will name him John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He must never drink wine or strong drink. Even before his birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. He will turn many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. With the spirit and power of Elijah, he will go before him to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah said to the angel, How will I know that this is so? For I am an old man, and my wife is getting on in years. The angel replied, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. But now, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time, you will become mute, unable to speak, until the day these things occur. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondered at his delay in the sanctuary. When he did come out, he could not speak to them, and they realized that he had seen a vision in the sanctuary. He kept motioning to them and remained unable to speak. When his time of service was ended, he went to his home. After those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and for five months, she remained in seclusion. She said, this is what the Lord had done for me when he looked favorably on me and took away the disgrace I have endured among my people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So here, the birth of John the Baptist foretold. So it's verse 5 started off in saying, In the days of King Herod of Judea. This is describing the signs of the time, the kind of time in which God was now intervening. So whenever we see a marker like in the days of, it is not just dating the time, but it is speaking to the kind of time. Because King Herod was an evil person, an oppressor, and King Herod so evil was he, if you recall, he, because he was afraid that he was going to lose his throne, he was so willing to wipe out all the infants 
so as to catch Jesus, to kill Jesus, so that he, Herod, would secure his seat of power. Isn't this an evil person? So this was a kind of time in which God was now intervening. Zachariah, both Zachariah and Elizabeth, was of a priestly tradition. Um, Zachariah himself was a priest, and Elizabeth was of the descendants of, of Aaron, which Aaron was, was a priest. In fact, the first priest in Israel served with Moses. So both of them were of a priestly tradition. Now, verse 6 uh, seems to serve as an introduction to verse 7. For verse 6 says both of them, Elizabeth and Zechariah, both were faithful, they were righteous, they were blamelessly in the sight of God. Yet, what they desired was not happening for them. They could not have any child. And the reason for this that is given is that Elizabeth was barren. Now, this um, here is prejudiced because, I mean, it could have been Zachariah, but because it was a patriarchal society, a man's society, how dare you to say that it was the man's fault? So they labeled the woman. Uh, it must be the woman's fault. So we see that there is oppression on the part of the woman there. The woman was being oppressed. Uh, so they could not, they were blamelessly in the sight of God, yet they could not have any children. This seems like an introduction to the fact that they could not have any children. Um, and we can look at how would this um, mean for today. Because any person who is of the faith, and especially today when people fast and pray just in order to get things, and for many persons, the only reason why they come to church is because they want particular things as though um, God is some uh, Santa Claus. This is how person, persons today treat God. We can see how this would have uh, impacted the faith of the such a person when they have been coming and yet it is not it is not happening so what would have kept Zachariah and Elizabeth it is prayer it is their faith that would have kept them going the theme of this section could be seen in the last verse in saying how Elizabeth Elizabeth was disgraced. She was embarrassed among her, pers or her people. And God is now liberating her. So the theme of this passage is liberation. So God is acting as a liberator in liberating, uh, freeing Elizabeth of the disgrace that she suffered among her people. So... Um, Zachariah was ministering, was his time to minister in the temple, in the Holy of Holies, the holiest place in the temple. And at the altar, there the Lord um, sent his messenger to, to speak to Zachariah. God was about to intervene in human affair by sending his messenger, sending a prophet in the person of John the Baptist who will be a forerunner, meaning that he is making preparation, preparing the way for the Messiah who is to come. What we also see in this passage is that um, there is a lot of implication here for marital relationship. Because the fact that um, they could not have any children, this has a lot of implication for the marriage. For it could reach the point, it could have reached the point wherein um, they get a divorce. 
They could have gotten a divorce as a result. So what is what are the implications here for marital life that it could have destroyed their relationship, the fact that they could not have any children? We could also see adultery or cheating. So um, we could have, have a case where Zachariah cheated on Elizabeth or, uh, you know, committed adultery. But... According to verse 6, they please God, they walk uprightly in the, in the presence of God. And this says much for how we, the church, do counseling today, um, marital counseling. Uh, because in reality and truth be told, there are several persons who sit before us on the day of worship. There are several persons who sit before us who are having marital issues. And uh, the task for the church today is how do we create ministries to minister to these situations, marital issues? How do we reach out to persons before us? We can't just do a surface reading or only talking about the nice fluffy stuff. But when persons go through the doors, they are going back home to their marital issues. So as, as witnesses, as people of faith today, how do we make the scripture relevant to persons who are dealing with marital issues? So here again, we see a key focus of Luke, the gospel writer, that Luke, he presented God as a liberator, that God is one who is freeing the disgrace of the poor, those who are marginalized. So God is a God who comes alongside those who are oppressed and marginalized. And such was the case of Elizabeth. And God is here freeing her of the disgrace. So much so you can just imagine how she felt. Imagine at an old age and you should walk in public carrying a pregnancy. She actually hid herself for five months. Five months as, as a consequence. So it shows the kind of culture. Think of our day to day. If how we would regard somebody in their 50s or 60s. Walking into church, Sister Elizabeth, look at Sister Elizabeth, she's pregnant. You know, this would spark a lot of gossips, wouldn't it? So, um, she was being taunted, she was being teased. This is, a, this is the word of Elizabeth in verse, in, the, in verse 25, that God would have dealt favorably with her by taking away her disgrace because people were chatting her imagine um i mean even today today if a person is married and if it is passing like a two three years going into four years five years and there's no child you know i mean i'm sure everybody everybody would um and anybody would actually um would cross their mind Right, it doesn't matter how anointed you are or which office you serve in, you would have questions. So, we can imagine the kind of talking and how people were seeing Elizabeth, but God would have taken interest in her in, in giving her a voice and is freeing her. God relieved her of the disgrace. Thank you for joining for this study session. Do join again as we continue our study through the book of Luke.